the, the minimum wage is, is largely for people trying to start. I mean, it's, it's a lot of propaganda. And, and unfortunately, the more, if you double the, the minimum wage, you're only going to make it more attractive for a lot of companies like McDonald's or whatever. I mean, here you walk into Wawa, you just push the buttons and that's it. You go to a park your car, there's nobody there. I mean, at $15, you're going to replace a lot of menial jobs basically with computers. Well, already, as you know, the move, France's plan for their economy is to go all robot. South Korea's plans to go all robot. Samsung says they have robots now better than humans. Foxcom's replacing uh, their labor with that in China. Uh, and this, I mean, you know the article, Why the Future Doesn't Need Us. Where do you see all that going? Basically, it's, you know, <clears throat> these are major waves of innovation. And uh, they're, they are always linked to, to major depressions and things of this nature. Um, the, the invention of the combustion engine put all the horse and buggies out of this, all right? And so effectively, you have a problem with skilled labor. The people have to learn new skills to move to the next innovation. And, you know, they don't do that. And then that's what causes higher unemployment, things of this nature. Uh, I get asked a lot, you know, gee, what do I, would I advise kids? Take programming. All right. It's if you understand how to program, then you can learn your whatever subject you're interested in, if it's medicine or whatever. But learning how to program, that is is like learning how to read or write. Absolutely. And they don't teach anybody that they teach them, go get some social degree that's totally worthless. And young people have almost no uh, communication skills now that's in the news today. And even Bloomberg admits that's the most valuable thing you can have is just social skills. People think you're pathetic if you say thank you and please. I um, mean, it's pretty scary. Well, you have uh, Forbes magazine really showed that 60% of the kids that have uh, a degree cannot find a job in, in whatever, whatever they have a degree in. It, it's really pretty bad. And um, the, the education system is basically an elite welfare state because they don't have to. Uh, produce anything all they have to do is is effectively just uh, take the money in and that's it so they don't really care if, if you found the job or, or whatever and a lot they of them do. don't care either they just want to act like they're innovating act like they're part of a trendy socialist club learn all the political correct terms and drool uh let's go ahead and take another call here uh let's go ahead and talk to pete we're going to break come back to eric go ahead pete Hello, Alex. It's Pete from Michigan. Yes, sir. Go ahead. I uh, got a quick question for your guest, and also I have some information for you later on. You bet. We're not um, screening your call. You're on air. Go ahead and talk to the guest. Okay. So the guest, I have a question. You're talking about all this economic stuff, and I have not heard at all how uh, we cannot pay off the national debt because it's all based on this fiat currency. Nobody really pitches that. Don't you think it'd be a good idea to really promote that idea so that people can start to understand the real problem? That's a good point. I mean, look, we're told we can't get out of this debt. $18 trillion from what I've researched is nothing compared to the derivatives we've been signed on to. Is that correct, Mr. Armstrong? Well, forget the derivatives. I mean, worldwide debt is $160 trillion. Uh, so the, this system never um, – the, there's only one country that ever paid off its debt, and that was Romania – and it created massive deflation. And at that point in time, then they they ended up in a revolution. And they so what do we do? Go ahead and just write it off. Effectively, I think the only solution to this is a complete debt restructuring, like you would do with a corporation. Sure, stay there. Let's talk the about it. Should not be able to borrow money. Period. Sure, sure stay um, there. We got to go to break. Uh, Pete, you're going to get your comeback, and then we're going to go to Eric, Eric, and Drake. Stay with us. By the way, in the first hour, I remembered that bizarre post Piers Morgan interview where they had Buzz Bissinger and Ambassador, a U.S. ambassador's daughter on, Ambassador Stevens' daughter on, where they fantasized about killing me with guns because I want to own guns. And then they said, yeah, we'll dress up in uniforms and kill him. And it's just really weird, bizarre behavior.
And now Salon, who has had a bunch of articles saying pedophilia is not a problem and saying pedoph pe pedophiles are people too. Yeah, and if I catch them touching my kids, I'm going to run an ice pick in their eye. How's that sound? Because uh, ice picks, you know, are ice picks too. Salon, people who want guns should be shot first. Quote, if you love guns, if they make you feel safe, then you need to be shot. So we're going to add that Buzz Bissinger thing to the bottom of that video just to show what I was talking about. This weird thing where they talk about violence. And again, I'm not even what you call a conservative. I'm a libertarian. But I'd be a liberal if you, you know, called me somebody like Thomas Jefferson. These new people that call themselves liberals are not liberals. They're very weird. Uh, Pete in Michigan, you had one other point you wanted to make. Go ahead quickly, please. Yeah, I uh, just wanted to say your your guest there is not exactly clearing the field on anything. He's talking about declaring bankruptcy. Yeah, that's fine. But first we need a plan, and then we need to declare the bankruptcy. But uh, we need to get rid of the Federal Reserve Bank also, or we're going to be right back in the same spot where we started. Well, I totally agree. The people that have maneuvered us into the situation need to be out of power. We need to go back to an Americana system. Let me ask Mr. Armstrong this question. Just in a nutshell, what financial system would you call Americana? Uh, the system of Alexander Hamilton or some of the other systems? Uh, I mean, I would say just get back to Congress issuing the currency and get back to a system based on money supply, based on population, and based on economic growth. Go back to what we had pre-Federal Reserve. Well, I think, you know, the, the issue that you have to understand is you really have to dissect what the problem is. I know some people think that if you go back to the gold standard, somehow that will that will turn politicians into saints. We had a gold standard. You know, they they fixed gold at thirty five dollars, but they continue to print money. So, you know, a two year old would figure out that that can be sustained. The, the The problem isn't what is the money. The problem is the politicians. And, you know, historically, for 6,000 years, they're the ones that always caused the problem. Sure, look at third world countries. I mean, they're always overprinting and and giving it to themselves up front. It's just standard procedure. Yeah, it's the politicians that are the real problem. Um, you know, what Jefferson spoke of, which she, you know, he actually said the Constitution should, should automatically expire every 19 years. Uh, why? Because... Taxation without representation is basically what he defined as a national debt. Slavery. Because now the younger generation has to pay higher taxes to pay off this national debt for something that was spent before they were even born. You shouldn't be able to saddle the next generation, and we're now here. We're the next generation. Everybody living right now is about to get the comeuppance when all this comes due. Right. This Taxation. This is what Jefferson's talked about, that taxation without representation. So we're having to pay off this debt. I mean, I think this, the only solution, honestly, is there shouldn't be career politicians, and we should not allow the federal government to even borrow money. Sure, it's illegal. And it, it, you, that's what you need, all right? And that's the real crux of the problem. And if you were to, to, to deal with that issue, then you would at least be able to sustain a system a little bit longer than, what, than perhaps historically what has taken place before. All right. We're going to do five more minutes, and I promise I'm going to Eric in Colorado, Eric in Michigan, and at least Drake in California. We're going to come in with your questions, your comments, and the final segment, and then a whole other hour with Leanne McAdoo. St. Louis has announced emergency plans for catastrophic nuclear event and more. And we've got Hillary saying they're coming after the guns. Leanne McAdoo, the Wonder Woman of the Airwaves, in the fourth hour. Stay with us. We'll be back with one final Thank segment with Martin Armstrong. Look, it comes down to this. We're sitting on top, total economic fantasy land. Those of us that produce, those of us that try to build a strong country, we're demonized because we can put two and two together. We need to get ready. We need to try to educate as many people as possible. We also need to be physically getting geared up and ready as well. Uh, let's go to Eric in Colorado. You're on the air with Martin Armstrong. Go ahead. Hey, good evening, sir. How are you doing? Good. Go ahead. Hey, um, so I was just wondering if you guys uh, caught last week's interview with Charles Koch. The uh, liberal one that was running around? Yeah, I saw some of it. Yeah, where uh, he pretty much came out on his uh, vision of what kind of society makes people's lives better. 
and I quote for you, uh, it is a society where people are too stupid and evil to run their own lives, but the people in power are more than capable of doing it because they are more intelligent. Yeah, and the Kochs fund Which, both sides of the political spectrum. Um, the left likes to have this conspiracy theory that they run everything, but, I mean, they're just part of the whole system, in my view. Um, what is your view on the Koch brothers uh, overall? And I did see that statement, uh, statements about how the, the elite are virtuous and we're all stupid scum. Oh, I mean, it's, you know, it's absolutely true that they think that. And during the interview, I mean, just basically, you know, if you watch a child, you can tell when a child is lying and you can very clearly see where he is lying and some of the questions that uh, Megyn Kelly ended up asking him. Sure, sure. Let me that. jump to Martin Armstrong, get his take. Thank you, Eric. Great, great point. Uh, go ahead, uh, Mr. Armstrong. Now, look, I mean, the, the so-called elites, they're in trouble and they really do not know what's going on and they can't control it. It, this is this is basically totally out of control at this point, and it's it's taking down everybody. And you know that idea that somehow that those in power know what's better for us. I mean, this is the the, the what's taking place in Europe, and you cannot elect any of the, the members of the Troika. None of them stand for election. All of them effectively are really just a dictatorship. And that's what this leads to, that they know better than we do, so therefore we don't even uh, understand that we should be electing these people, so they just take power. I agree with you, absolutely. Let's go ahead and go to Drake in California, then Eric in Michigan. Drake, you're on the air. Thanks for holding. Hi, how you doing? Good. Hi, uh, I just wanted to bring up a... Um, I. For some reason, I went back to Facebook for like all about two minutes, and I just saw people from back home just over and over just scrolling and seeing people just bashing the Second Amendment. And uh, one of the former teachers I used to teach with brought up this uh, Michael Shea character from SNL, where he basically comes out and says, we need to get rid of the Second Amendment. And the Constitution was written by a bunch of crazy old people that also said you can own own people as well, so it's just a discredited document. Well, that's a, I mean, what, you're just making a point about that, uh, this uh, push to demonize gun owners for anything that somebody else does with a gun, that's like blaming somebody that runs over someone for a car, so you blame other drivers for it. Uh, it's kind of like this weird collectivist guilt thing that you see in totalitarian regimes. Uh, Martin Armstrong, you have any comments on that? What? The, the Second Amendment was largely there for, the, for one purpose, and that was basically to protect the people from government. That's really what it was about. And um, that you, <clears throat> there was uh, a large uh, view of many, uh, what they really wrote about at that point, Montesquieu, et cetera, was that what caused wars was the fact you had standing armies. And therefore, the Second Amendment was to really place the, the arms in the hands of the people and that there would not be a standing army. That's right. And Very that quick, excellent answer. Use it. Well, you know your stuff. Martin Armstrong, look forward to having you back on armstrongeconomics.com. Read your analysis and find out more. Thank you so much. Oh, thank you for inviting me. You bet.